Money News Ultimate Wealth Reporter Mark Chan, the global head of currency strategy at Brown Brothers, Brothers Harriman, to get you set up for the trading day. Uh, Sean, I want to start with you and what's happening with precious metals because I know that that's basically your wheelhouse here. Gold is already down 24% this year. I think it was off by about 7% last week alone. What happens this week? Yeah, I think gold goes down a bit further, uh, and the reason being is because, you know, you, you had gold go in a sideways range for about a year and a half, formed a rectangular pattern on the chart. It broke that around 15, 20, 15, uh, 50. What a Mark Chan, the global head of currency strategy at Brown Brothers, Brothers Harriman, to get you set up for the trading day. Uh, Sean, I want to start with you and what's happening with precious metals, because I know that that's basically your wheelhouse here. Gold is already down 24% this year. I think it was off by about 7% last week alone. What happens this week? Yeah, I think gold goes down a bit further, uh, and the reason being is because you know you, you had gold go in a sideways range for about a year and a half, formed a rectangular pattern on the chart. It broke that at around 15, 20, 15, uh, 50, and so there's a minimum price target that takes gold down to about 12, uh, 1240, and so anywhere in that range really is the the starting point where with which where somebody would want to start investing in gold again, but not a moment sooner, because these things can actually shoot further past that. Then once the dust settles and, and, and things stabilize, I believe we'll see gold eventually head back to the 15, 1600 level. Apart from the price dropping, though, Sean, what's the investment case for gold at this stage? When I mean, there's no inflation out there right now, and certainly we're not seeing enough physical buying to be able to support gold at these prices. Yeah, in the near term, I think, well, I think you've got a near term, long term catalyst. The near term catalyst is, I believe, you're going to see stocks continue to correct further. I think you'll see Dow go to 14,000, S&P 500 go to 1,500. Um, and so I think a lot of money might get scared and go into uh, to gold there. But also, you're starting to see the dollar deteriorate. Uh, the dollar had gone up for two years. It reached a. a, a Hang on, the dollar deteriorate? Down, the dollar please. deteriorate? Yeah, Isn't the dollar, a dollar had. Moment? The dollar's going out for the last uh, four weeks in a row. It was set for the last in the latter part of last week. But yeah, and it's, it formed a new lower low uh, in the month of uh, June. And so it's broken a near term uh, uptrend line. It's reached the top of a long term downtrend line. It's been in effect since 2005. And so I think we could actually see the dollar roll over from here. If the dollar goes lower, then we see a lot of support for both gold and silver. The dollar rolling over. What do you reckon, Mark? Yeah, I, I don't know. I don't know where that's coming from. Here's my take of things. There's three different forces at work here in the, in the markets. First, of course, is the tapering talk by the Federal Reserve. Secondly, is the Japanese continue to sell foreign assets. Already this year, they've sold about $125 billion of foreign assets. And the third factor, encouraging this global unwind, is the fact that there's a liquidity squeeze in China, which has also been subject to a big carry trade as well. So I see the dollar as being the big winner here. I think the dollar is on its way to new highs for the year against the euro. Uh, Swiss franc, as well as the British pound. I'm just trying to still understand the timing of this. That's all I care about. All I care about is whether what's going to happen this summer. Meaning, is this is this only going to get worse? Is it going to get better? And when? What going to get worse? The market drop. The market drop. The last four years, and we just, we've had five to ten we, percent we corrections just, every summer. Although I have to say, but this, about every, this time it feels a little weird. It's got to be different because you've got China with now these issues going on. You've got the QE coming off the table. It does feel a little different than it did. In the previous <clears> I want to know if, it, if it's if this is cyclical or it's. A little secular. I, think, I think this is the end of a four of a four year of trade. And the four year trade has been short the dollar, long emerging markets, short the dollar, long commodities, short the dollar, long gold. I think this is a multi year trade that's being unwound here. I don't think it's the same thing as last summer. I think this is a new world because we're talking about the end of the QE in the U.S. Even if it's not yet, it's going to be coming perhaps in the next six to nine so, months. So as the U.S. dollar strengthens in that scenario, can stocks also rise, Bob? Well, yes, I think this can. is the unwinding yeah. of the carry trade. Be agreed. It's the unwinding of the carry trade, and stocks can rise because we have a manufacturing renaissance, we're heading toward energy independence, you've got the federal budget deficit, uh, fed, um, falling and so the debt to GDP ratio is not going up like people thought. The U.S. is doing some good things despite uh, the concerns in the near term, which I'm not going to minimize. Mm -hmm. I, I wouldn't disagree that those things are going on. I think that the, 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 con the conviction about them doesn't arrive by invitation. So in other words, these rotations happen, but they can be messy. And I, I feel like one of the reasons that we reacted so strongly to Bernanke is if he's sort of signaling we've done all we can do, or we might by early, by mid next year, then 
and we still have an economy that's not performing the way we feel like it should be, uh, and we still don't see the reacceleration in the second half, we don't have another story to let Agreed. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. I, I, I think there's something bigger going on as well. Bernanke also talked about an upgrading the U.S. economic assessment. The downside risks had been reduced. For example, 1.7 million American households are now not in negative equity in the houses because, as we'll find out tomorrow as well with the Case-Shiller house price index, housing prices are up 10% in the past year. And this is important stuff. Still. You know, here, here on television, though, we all have to admit, and our, I think our viewers and listeners know this, right? You want to sound as smart as you can. You want to say these sort of complex things and make people think you're really dialed in. All I care about is will the American consumer spend more or less money? Will businesses invest more or less money? Because I hate to be so doggone Graham and Dodd boring, but... A stock is just earnings. It's supposed to be earnings, right, That's, Bob? I mean, but, and we're lost in all this other stuff. No, but, but it's the just the getting dependent on ISM, <clears throat> durable goods, and Philly Fed are all down from last year. The economy seems to be slowing a bit. That, to me, seems to be the biggest. I don't disagree, and Mike's already brought that up. Look, the last 18 months, it's been mostly PEs, not earnings. And if PEs are done, and PEs are probably done if the Fed's done, then the next thing that moves what do you stocks mean, done? up. Finished Got multiple expansion. Multiple over. expansion. We have enjoyed as the Fed it's has over. given now us all the need. We need to see E, uh, and we now need we need. E and we need. E we need, we need earnings, earnings, which means we need up. an economy, and then we need some revenues. And the jury's out on that. And that's why this might take so, some time. So if we take this one step further, if the Fed had stopped at the end of QE two and not gone ahead with QE three, where do you think the stock market would be today, based on economic fundamentals and earnings alone? Not not where it is. It would be lower than where it is because the last a lot leg, lower. Well, I don't know. It's a lot lower, but the last leg was about the financial issues. It was still about the big black hole. QE1, QE2, QE3, we have the risk of a black hole, and that risk in the Fed's mind, and I think legitimately, is lessening. Mm -hmm. And therefore, the PE run that has occurred as people have recognized the big black hole isn't going to happen is in its waning days, and we need to move to E. Mike? I agree. No, the, the, the role was to wrestle volatility to the ground. And that actually that worked. allowed you to have all these riskier assets uh, do better. And so maybe the trick is just at the moment we thought a risk was gone, something comes back. I don't think it's the big black hole like, like Bob's talking I, I like that analogy. Central bank MMA, Bernanke versus Bullard, no holds barred cage match. Who wins? By the way, I actually think the interesting thing about the Bullard... It it's obvious. The Bullard, Bernanke will always win. The interesting thing... Come about, actually physically about fighting. About two cents. <laughs> Cust of fist. <laughs> Fisticuffs, I think it is, actually, Brian. What <laughs> 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 language do you speak? <laughs> Australian? <An> inside joke. <laughs> <laughs> the interesting thing about two dissents, one hawk, one dove, is... It, you remember when we were talking about the Hindenburg omen? You know, you have too many new highs and new lows at the same time. There's sort of a dissonance in there, in the message. And I think that's interesting, and it tells you why... The the market's confused. Okay, well, let's go back to Sean and Mark and get the playbook for this week. Um, give us your best trade, uh, Mark, and it doesn't have to be dollar, doesn't have to be yen. You can go a little bit out of the box. For example, what's the best trade, for example, for an emerging market currency this week? Yeah, no, I think that we're best served by thinking that these trends that were, we were in place last week will continue this week, and that means a stronger dollar, not just against the major currencies, but against the emerging market currencies as well. This unwind is still in the relatively early stages. I still like the dollar for the next uh, several months on the uh, just a forward-looking basis. And, Sean, where do we go for gold this week? <coughs> what levels are we looking you know at? You know, the, mar the markets are so elevated, there's not a lot of areas of the market that are trading at a value. Right now, you've got a gold stock like Newmont Mining trading at single-digit PEs. It's trading a couple of bucks above its book value. It's got a billion and a half uh, of cash on its books, and it's got like a 4.7% dividend yield. So that would be my play. Okay, a gold miner play. Thank you very much, Mark and Sean. Thank you.